What makes a closed community game fun? First, let's define what a closed community game is. A closed community game is a game in which there is a limited amount of players. Typically within Roblox closed community games, these players are in it and it's locked behind a group or a code within the game that whitelists certain players. In this video, I'm gonna give you four points that came to mind that make closed community games fun to me. And although I understand that not everyone who watches this video has played a closed community game before, I will say that in the future, I plan to announce a side project of mine that will be a closed community game that I am working on with my friend. And I hope to give my subscribers a chance to play the game. I don't wanna to announce too much about the game just yet, but I hope you all enjoy the game in the future. Now, the reason why I'm making this video is because I'm entering that state of mind where I feel like I have nothing to record, but there are things to record. So I'm forcing myself to make a video in the hopes that I can get back into the right mood to record videos. And I also have to travel for the week, so I wanted to make some videos to hopefully stop my streak of no upload, so I apologize for that. And if this video does well, I may make a video in the future explaining my issues with closed community games, how my opinion of them has changed over time, and why they tend to receive criticism from both the public and the players within them. But for now, without further ado, let's begin. Now the first thing that I notice about closed community games for me that makes it very fun is the roleplay aspect. Now you might be thinking, Robo, what do you mean by the roleplay aspect? Like, you're just yourself playing the game, what are you talking about? Not really. Although you're yourself in real life playing the game, you're no longer just living in real life when you do play a closed community game. The game and the time that you dedicate to it in the closed community game, of course, in itself is a new life. As confusing as that might sound, you're basically creating a new life in that game. You can imagine anime like SAO, Sword Art Online, and even some of the other like Isekai in which you're playing the video game are like that. You're imagining a new life for yourself in that game. And as weird as this sounds, being able to live a whole new life or experience in part of a closed community game is just fun. And a prime example of the roleplay aspect that I mentioned can be found in closed community games like Naruto ones. So like NO2 for example, you spawn into the game and you're given a random village and a random clan within said village. And the people you meet within your village end up being your brothers and sisters whether you like it or not. And you typically don't get to pick who's in your village. So at least that's how it was in the past. Nowadays, closed community games often allow like the leaders to hard code a certain amount of their friends or people into their factions. And a prime example of this, you can kind of find it in the CC game that Seiji, Doge, and myself and some of the others played called Dame V4. And in that, we were allowed to be hard-coded into the Mist Village, which was pretty fun at first, but I think the whole fun of the closed community for me in the roleplay aspect is the fact that I get to meet new people and befriend new people because I made a lot of new friends along the way when I did play one. Now, number two is the experiences that you create with the people around you. Now, what does this mean? The experiences being not the, not the game, but the moments. The moments that you experience with the people around you are some of the greatest in a closed community game. Now you can have great moments in a non-closed community game, of course, in a paid access game, of course, in a open beta, in a free to play game, of course. But in a closed community game, the reason why I enjoy it so much is because of the role that you play, like I mentioned in the previous version or the previous step, a role you play. And then with these roles, you know that you have to like save your teammates or be there for your brothers and sisters. Now in a CC game, you're typically bound to the physics and code of the game. But whilst the players may not be able to control how things function, they can control how they interact and react with others. And often in a CC game, you can find new friends. You can make a faction or fight against other factions or groups of people at the start of the week. But then at the end of the week, you can find yourself being friends with them. It's crazy how at the beginning of the week, you could be against them. And towards the end, you could be working together to fight a mutual enemy. Everything and anything in a CC game is possible within the aspects of the game that are created. Now the relationships between factions or players of the closed community game can be formed with ease, but they're also able to end just as fast. And the tension between players is really what drives the toxicity, the sudden change in a player's behavior, and what decisions they end up making in the moment. Now when a friend outside of the CC game gets into the CC game and you guys aren't in the same faction or alliance, it's quite interesting how the CC can affect your friendship with that person. Now, a prime example is if you've seen my videos or Sagey's videos or Ivy Maid's videos, this is the best example. So initially when NO2 was accepting more people, I got in and soon after Sagey got in and we started playing, but we weren't in the same village, so we couldn't help each other. Sagey was born into the sand village and I was born into the cloud village within NO2. And then a little bit of time passed and Main eventually got into my village when he got into NO2. So we were in the same village and we often ran missions together and often saved each other's lives. Um, and Seiji actually still being in the sand, but actually he went rogue. 
if I'm being honest. He went rogue pretty early on. And so we hardly were able to interact with Seiji if it wasn't just to fight against him. However, this weird situation didn't really mess up our friendship between the three of us. It honestly made us embrace the moment and it gave us an experience and stories that we're never ever gonna forget. Something that we'll always be able to share with each other. And that's why this step is very important. These moments, this could be the most important step in my opinion. These moments that you create with your friends are gonna have lingering effects on you. It's just so much fun to remember these moments. Now, number three is the game itself. A closed community game can have one of the worst coding in the world, but as long as it's functional for the most part and a good portion of its players do not care, it's ideal to have a well-coded game, of course, but if players don't care, from what I've noticed, it's not really a requirement. And players simply just wanna have fun with their friends. And if a game is coded to the point in which they can do that, then they're open to playing it. However, some of the most visually basic games are often the most fun. Now, I understand number three was pretty short, but it's pretty self-explanatory. Number four actually is pretty important too. The lasting effects that the game has or the experience has on the player. I could combine this with number two, but I decided to keep it separate because I think it deserves its own point. Now, after NO2 closed, the friends that I made within the game, they've remained some of my friends to this day. And some of them even picked up development skills since NO2 closed and have continued their time on Roblox, either making games or making things on Roblox like 3D models or faces and stuff like that. And actually, my one of my friends in NO2, Justin, He's like, I've been commissioning him for faces for some of my games, like Deadly Sins Retribution. I believe he made some faces for that. And I even commissioned him for one of my secret projects that I haven't announced just yet. He made a bunch of faces for that. So I'm very excited to show off that for you guys in the future. Now, since NO2 closed, we've seen a large amount of closed community games start up. And at first I had an issue with these because initially they were mainly copies and these copies were only created so that the people who owned it or like copied it could get some internet clout. And I think it's fair to judge someone for that. I think it's fair to judge the copies that just want to do that. However, it's been a while since the closed community games craze occurred and it's kind of died down a bit in terms of just making it every single week, which I kind of like. But lately I've noticed a lot more CC games have been starting up just so friends can have fun together. Not just so the owners can get some internet clout. Now the owners typically want to get internet clout, but what I've noticed, a lot of these games just promote having fun with your friends. And like I mentioned before, you can recruit your friends into your village. You can hard code them to fight with you. And that's often what makes it a lot more pleasurable experience for me because I've already experienced like the whole meeting new people and starting a new group and everything like that. And honestly, I enjoy having my friends with me, being able to play with my friends a lot more than having to make new friends. And it's difficult to make new friends, even online. Well, that's pretty much all I wanted to say for this video. Thank you for watching the video, everyone. I did not have much time to work on this video, so I apologize if some of the things I say in this video don't really make sense. Again, this is just my opinion. Nothing I'm saying is absolute fact. This is just the opinion of someone who's played close community games before, but I hope that you understand this and it's all from my perspective. Nothing's a fact, remember that. But also remember, I do plan to release a close community game, maybe two in the future, just so like I can have fun with my subscribers or with my friends. I wanna tell a story in a close community game. That's what I really wanna do. So if I ever make a close community game, it's not just for you guys to fight each other. It's mainly for a story to be told, so be on the lookout for that.